The idea of, of power, of human beings having power, we actually, in the end, we express our powerlessness by saying, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. There is no power, there's no strength to حول, like you حول, to make any changes or to actually uh, affect anything. There's no strength or power except billa through the means, the divine enablement. This is the istita'a that Imam al-Tahawi mentions in his book that he grants us. And so it's very important for us not to see power even in the world, to see nations with power. They, there's actually, they don't have power in reality. And the people that understand this are actually, they're, they're, they're the freest people because they're, they're not afraid. They're not afraid of people that are in power. They're not afraid. I mean, obviously we behave with the asbab. So we're not foolish people in that way. The, the Prophet ﷺ said, المؤمن لا يذل نفسه That a believer should never humiliate himself. And so uh, Sidi Ahmed Zarruq and others uh, mentioned that they should not ever put themselves in situations where they will be humiliated. And Ahmed Zarruq said, لا يتعرض للسلطان That they don't oppose government uh, in a way that the government will in turn uh, humiliate them. Uh, put them in jail and do these things. Powerlessness is our state. It is the actual natural state of the servant of Allah. We are abd. And the, the thing about the abd, the, the abd is ajiz. He's, he or she is powerless. It's the abd and the amma that they are, they only, they do what they're told by their mawla. Which again doesn't mean that we don't do things, we choose things in the world, we do all these things. But we live with this alignment with the divine. In other words, we restrict ourselves to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted us to do. And in that way, we in a sense are handing over uh, that freedom. And in doing that, by, by, by entering into Islam, by entering into a state of submission, we actually become free. Uh, so there's a, an immense power in powerlessness and there's an immense freedom in powerlessness. And this is something that the early Muslims really understood well. They, they, they understood this in a very deep and powerful way. Um, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, طوبى لمن تواضع في غير من قصى طوبى لمن تواضع في غير من قصى طوبى, some of the uh, commentaries say that طوبى is a tree in paradise. There are many hadith that use this term, tuba. It, it also can mean blessed are the people, but, but uh, some say it's actually a tree with immense shade and fruit in paradise that, uh, that will be for the people who do these things. So he said, من تواضع في غير منقصة Who humbles him or herself without منقصة, without, there's no deficiency in them. In other words, like a wealthy person that's humble despite his wealth, an intellectual, uh, highly educated person who's humble despite their education and their understanding. Th that's what it means to be humble. And it's something that we have to struggle with. Uh, it, there, there's, there's, a, there's a type of tawadu, if you actually look at the, the, the morphological form of it, it actually has to do with like you actually do it with a knowledge that you need to be humble. Uh, because in the end, al-kibriya'u lillah, al-azamatu lillah, wa al-kibriya'u lillah, that, that magnanim, the, the vastness, the greatness, the grandeur, uh, the glory and the majesty, all of these are attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not attributes of a servant. And so the servant should be humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu said, man tawada lillah, rafa'ahu Allah. Whoever is humble before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will elevate that person. And this is something that we have to learn as an ummah, that uh, in, in, in many ways, uh, we, we, we tend to forget this important metaphysical truth, that Allah will, will elevate the people who are humble. لا يريدون علوم في الأرض ولا فسادا. Those who don't want to be exalted in the earth, they don't want it. لا يريدون علوم في الأرض ولا فسادا. And that wow there indicates that these are two separate things. They don't want to be elevated in the earth. فرعون الله says على في الأرض على فرعون. He 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 exalted himself. He puffed himself up in the earth. And so it's very important that Muslims should not want to be in those positions of power or authority, 
to be, no. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever seeks positions of authority or power, uh, they should not be given them. There goes elections. So, so it's very important that we remember that Allah is the one that you mekken, that he's the one that gives tamkeen, but he gives tamkeen with conditions. For the people he loves, he'll give tamkeen. What do they do? Aqamu salah. You know, they, they establish prayer. They, they pay their zakat. They fulfill the obligations of being in that position. If they don't have that ability, if Allah loves them, he will not give them, uh, he will not establish them in the earth. And so powerlessness is a, an incredible sunnah that I believe it's actually a sunnah mansiyah. It's a forgotten sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu he, before, even when he was forced into jihad, and, and it's very clear, Ibn Taymiyyah makes this clear, and many scholars, he really was constantly looking for avenues of peace. The Prophet ﷺ always wanted to find an avenue of peace. In the 29 uh, battles, they're called battles, they're not battles, ghazawat are military expeditions. They're not battles, but they're often translated as battles. It's a mistake. Because in those 29, there, there's again difference of opinion, 27, 29, but in those 29 battles, fighting only occurred in 11. And in the greatest battle in terms of numbers, which was the Khandaq, less than 10 people died. And there were tens of thousands of people involved in that, 3,000. On the Muslim side, 30,000, it was 10 to 1 numbers. The, despite that, less than 10 people died. And when I did a study of the number of people that died during the Prophet's lifetime, we're looking at less than 400 people. It's, it's quite stunning. And the Bani Quraidah, which is clearly an exaggerated number, and the, the, uh, the book that uh, uh, Barakat Ahmed wrote, uh, Muhammad and the Jews, is, I think, a really important book um, that, that really shows that the numbers were grossly exaggerated. Uh, much later. So, so this idea of طوبة لمن تواضع في غير من قصة وذل في نفسه من غير مسألة and he, he ذل في نفسه he, in his own self he, he deems himself insignificant and this is another really important quality is to recognize not only are we all expendable as de Gaulle said that the graveyard is filled with indispensable people that I mean, one of the things about life is that when you die, most people are just going to, oh, you know, if they knew you, they might say, oh, mashallah, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. If they were close, they might send condolences to the family and things. But the people that are really going to miss you are your direct loved ones. Those are the people that are going to miss you. Other people won't really miss you. The, the world goes on. And we've lost greats. When Ibn Manjur died, who was one of the greatest scholars of Morocco, the man who buried him, who was his student, wept and just said, I knew this world was insignificant when, when a man that had this tongue, because he taught his whole life and, and he was just a master of all the sciences, one of the truly great faqis of, of Moroccan history. And he said, I just knew that if worms could eat this, tongue, this earth was worth, th th this earth had such insignificance in my eyes. And, and this is the nature of dunya, we're passing through it. It's important and we're people that love the alam because it's Allah's creation, but we, we despise the dunya and the, the distinction between those two is very important, between alam and between dunya. Alam is this incredible theophany, it's this, it's this amazing theater of enlightenment, it's this incredible manifestation of divine attributes, uh, the actions of God, the af'al of God, it's stunning with, with its stars in the heavens, all of these galaxies, this extraordinary sky, uh, the blueness uh, of the sky and its reflection in the ocean, uh, the wonders of the sea, the incredible uh, spectrum of flora and fauna on this planet. We're all now we're living in a time where we're discovering all these micronutrients and all these amazing foods from all over the world. These these that aspect of the world is something to just marvel at and to feel joy just about being in it. But the dunya is reputation. It's uh, you know he said she said. Uh, King Lear. There's a wonderful scene at the end of King Lear where. He tells Cordelia, you know, about how we're going to be free now. 
from who's in and who's out at the court. You know, we can live life now without having to worry about, uh, because he has a realization, an incredible realization in that play. This is part of dunya. As you get older, you will see more and more how empty and vacuous the life of this world is. Hayatul dunya. Mata'un, mata'ul ghurur. It's, the, it's a, a delusional pleasure. Mata'ul ghurur. That's all it is. It's a delusional pleasure. I've been with the poorest people on the planet, and I've been with the richest people on the planet. I've, I've seen the inside of palaces, and I've, I've lived in the huts of some of the poorest people on the planet, and uh, some of the most extraordinary people I've ever met are, are the poorest people that I've met. And um, so, I, you know, this is dunya. We, have to, we, we just have to understand the nature of the abode and what it is. Uh, and, and, and so you have this sense of your own insignificance. One of my favorite stories of all the stories in the Sirah, which is in a Sahih collection also, Aisha, the beloved wife of the Prophet when she, when, when she was slandered so uh, horribly, when she found out about it, she, she, her hair fell out, she stopped eating, she, she went into a horrible uh, depression. Uh, for a period of time, and then, and then the revelation came. But she said, Kuntu I, I, I deemed myself insignificant. She said, I knew Allah would absolve me of this, um, of this slander, but I just deemed myself insignificant that any revelation would come. That, that's what this is about. Like beggars, just by begging, you know, dhalla fi nafsihi. But uh, it's saying without b being in a state of need, you have this insignificant view of yourself. And this is something really important. I mean, so many people just take themselves far too seriously and, the, and their own significance. And, um, and it just creates ego. It creates a sense of... Um, of um, uh, just an inflated sense of self. And, and there's, uh, there's nothing worse than a puffed up soul. Uh, I mean, one of the things in, 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 in the Western tradition, they have this idea of kenosis, of the emptying out of the soul. And we have the idea of takhliya. It's, it's the same concept. You empty your soul of yourself. I mean, there's a beautiful Egyptian expression for the Egyptians out there. There's a beautiful Egyptian expression that, that I, th I thought about because I always thought it was so, such a strange way of... The Egyptians, like in, in, in Mexico, you have idioms, like in, in, in Spanish, they say, pongase mastrucha, you know, like watch out, which if you actually literally translate it, it seems strange. But in, in Egypt, when they say watch out, they say, khalli balak min nafsik. Khalli balak min nafsik just means watch out. You know, you know, watch out. But what it literally means is empty your mind of yourself. That's how you watch out. Because if you empty your mind of yourself, if you, if you, Allah will watch out for you. Uh, it's, it must have come from, uh, from some enlightened people in Egypt that just started that phrase because it's a beautiful phrase khalli balak min nafsik empty your mind of yourself and one of the Moroccan great Moroccan sages Sidi Ali al-Jamal he said rayyah balak wa ta'alam as-sibaha set your mind at ease and learn how to swim set your mind at ease and learn how to swim the world is in good hands. No matter what you see out there of trial and tribulation, it's all from what we, our own hands have wrought. All of it. There's nothing out there that we haven't caused ourselves. People say, where is God? Somebody actually said to that, that to me recently, somebody from one of these countries that's going through immense tribulation. They said, where is God? And I just said, I think God's question to us is, where are you? And, and that is a perfectly valid question from God. It's not a valid question from us. La yusaru amma yafal, wa hum yusalun. God is not asked about what he does. 
but they will be asked about what they do. And so that's a different way of looking at it. So just remembering that power is Allah's alone. Allahumma malik al mulk, tuat al mulk man tasha. O Allah, possessor of dominion. Malik al mulk, tuat al mulk man tasha. You give dominion to whom you please. You give it to whom you please. Wa tanzi al mulk min man tasha. Wa tu'izu man tasha. Wa tu'zillu man tasha. You dignify whom you please and you humiliate or abase whom you please. This is, this is, uh, this is it.